Hello, we are Nerds of the West. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are showing you how to play 10 wickets. Uh, if you're watching this in the time that it comes out, it is live on Kickstarter and we think you should go and check it out. Uh, and with that said, we are playing this with a sponsorship from uh, the team at Seabrook Studio. So thank you very much to them. And that carries through for all our content for this week. So the how to play, the review and the playthrough, which you can all catch on YouTube. But we, the people that are gonna be showing you this wonderful cricket based card game. My name is Tom, we have a Chris. Hi, I'm Chris. And this is 10 Wickets, a game all about cricket. Uh, in this game, you are aiming to have the highest score by winning auctions for all these batsmen that are here in the middle of the table. Uh, and the lower that you bid on a batsman is better because those points that you bid will go to the other player, thereby giving them a lower score and hopefully you the highest score for the win. The game will end when one player has taken 10 wickets. Chris, how do we get to those 10 wickets? Well, the turn structure is as follows. You get one of three options uh, on your turn before turn passes to your opponent. Uh, and the first of those is to uh, get runs. The first uh, and most straightforward option is to take a run card, such as the one that Tom is showing you there, uh, alongside one of these good ball tokens, which are worth minus 10. Uh, and the other way is... Uh, you can discard one card, so I will discard this 16, to draw two cards. Uh, and that will go up to a hand limit of eight cards. If you ever have eight cards in hand, you cannot draw any more. Uh, and these run cards will range from the low numbers, where there are multiples of the twos, threes, fours, and fives, uh, all the way up to 50, 60 points. Uh, the next option uh, that you have on your turn is to bid on these scores here. Uh, so Chris, if you want to bid on one of the batsmen, you oh, need to shell. beat the number that is below that batsman. So 34 here, 38 there, 16 there. Um, I'll give you an example. This is my bid of 50 for the all-rounder worth 38. Uh, I then have the option to try and outbid him. Uh, so it's a little bit higher, but I am going to go for 62. Uh, Chris will then have the option to either bid on anywhere else that he wants to do, uh, but you also have the option to alter a bid. So what is altering a bid in this game? Notably, once a bid is placed, you can then alter your own bid in any such way that you desire. You can play or take cards back from the bid, but the rule must remain that it must be outbidding either the card with reference that you're trying to bid for, the all-rounder in this case, or if it's counterbid by an opponent, by their counterbid. So in this example here, I must now alter my bid if I wish to by making at least 63 and I'll do that with a 13. So 50 plus 13 in this case adds up to uh, 63 and that then is winning the bid. Uh, as an example of altering a bid, I could change up to 70 in this instance by taking back the 62, adding two cards there to add up to 70. Honestly, not a great move because now I'm bidding a very large number of points mm -hmm. uh, in a way that you can bid less points is by using the good ball tokens that you get by taking one card. And you can only use them on the first time that you place a bid. Uh, and this tail ender here is currently going for 16. If I use a minus 10 there, I can then bid six to lower that down to 16. Once those bids are in place, you can do the third action, uh, mm -hmm. which is to take a wicket. If you are ever leading in a wicket in any way, uh, you, you can take a wicket by taking that tail ender putting it into my area. When you win a bid, the winning cards are removed from the game and the losing cards, if there are any, are moved into the discard pile, up this end of the table for us, so they can be shuffled back in later. Once you have taken a wicket and moved the cards to the discard pile, you claim your tail ender, you put it here to track how many you have of that, and you flip over the card that was there before, that is the new batsman, and you reveal a new one from the deck for a new number for that batsman to be. Chris will now write in, six for the fact that I've taken someone for six. You cross out the highest one for that kind of batsman. Uh, the tail ender is the one that works a little bit different because when you lose a tail ender, you can cross out the lowest number of the next available. So it starts at the all rounder, you would cross out the lowest all rounder and move upwards all the way up through. So if you have already crossed out everything from um, your all rounders, you go up to the keeper. And what that means is if you take a tail ender when you've already taken all of your all rounders, you will then move up the order um, if you take an all rounder to the next in the order. That's exactly right. One thing worth noting also, 
uh, is that if you're ever winning two or more bid, I suppose it would only ever be two bids, then the action you take must be to take a wicket. So for example, here in this example, uh, I'm winning the bid on both the all-rounder and the tail-ender, and it's my turn. I have no choice. I must choose one of them to score a wicket for uh, and subsequently re resolve the points. Uh, there are a few uh, strange examples of uh, where this can go because there are limits to the number of batsmen you can get for each kind of batsman. Down the bottom of each card, and let's green screen these bad boys, uh, you will have these dots and they indicate how many of that batsmen you are allowed to take. You are only ever allowed to take two openers and there is a whole deck full of a whole lot of cards uh, and we'll show off the pinch hitter here. The pinch hitter is a wild uh, that will go into anything, any number of batsmen that you need, but you choose that right away. Uh, and so that will count for the limit of say four for the, uh, three for the all rounder. Mm. So you're only allowed to take three all rounders. That doesn't stop you from bidding all-rounders to try and increase the score of what the other player is bidding for the all-rounders they need to get their 10 wickets. What it does mean, though, is if the other player forces you into a situation of taking an all-rounder when you already have too many, uh, instead of taking those points and adding it in the next available wicket, you add it to the previous wicket. So you are increasing your score without, uh, sorry, increasing your opponent's score without actually mm -hmm. moving the game yeah. forward. And that's bad. No, you need to be taking those wickets. So the game goes back and forth in those ways uh, by you taking cards, adding cards to bids, and taking wickets until you have taken all 10 wickets. Mm -hmm. At that point, the game immediately ends. And what that will mean is for one player, you will have filled in all 10 wickets, and that is your final score for that person. Mm -hmm. um, you add those up, and that's nice and easy. For the other player, I'm just going to write in a bunch of numbers here as an example. 20... 15, 9, 7. Uh, there are two spaces left over. And that is where all these things that you have been crossing out as you go come into play. So you check which two are left open and you add in those numbers. So for the ones that are down below, it's nice and easy. It would just be a 30 or a 20. Uh, but there are some ones where there are cards left over. So you shuffle up your opponent's leftover cards and in this case, I will then need two cards, one for the 40 and one for the 30. So if you could reveal those for me, Chris. Taking it random. Oof. Oh no. 31 and eight. So I would fill in 40 plus 31, 71 for that. Mm. And 30 plus eight, 38 there. So and I, then I ideally, add up my score. you don't want to be caught with cards in your hand at the end if you're in the position where you have not outs because it could be costly. Yes, uh, and that will add up to all the scores in the end. Uh, you add up all your scores and the person with the highest score wins. So the lower you can bid, the lower your opponent's score, the more chance of you winning. That is 10 wickets. Uh, it's a two player auction game with a lot of strategy involved into where you force your hand. If you want to see it played through, we're now going to do that live on twitch.tv slash nerds of the West. You can join us every single week and that video will be up on YouTube soon. I've been Tom, this is Chris. I'm Chris. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and we will catch you next time. <laughs>